Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about Fuchs heterochromic cyclitis or iridocyclitis, FHC or FHI for short. Now this very long named condition is actually a fascinating condition that has a collection of very specific signs and symptoms and it can result in a significant visual loss and therefore a significant morbidity for patients. So if you want to learn more about this then please stay tuned. So what causes FHC? The answer is we don't really know. The common culprits are thought to be viruses and the most frequently associated viruses with the condition are rubella virus and cytomegalovirus CMV. The condition affects both males and females equally and it classically is diagnosed in early adulthood. The difficulty with diagnosing this condition, as you will see later, is the fact that it is largely asymptomatic and there is a rumbling inflammation that is ongoing that causes the constellation of symptoms that are then seen in the condition. Unlike other forms of uveitis or iritis, please refer to my video about iritis, where patients present with a painful red eye with sensitivity to light and they are found to have inflammation within the eye, FHC is asymptomatic. So they have a white eye, they have no pain, no sensitivity to light, and usually it is diagnosed and picked up as an incidental finding. If they do present with complaints to their eye care practitioner, it is usually because they have developed the secondary complications of having this condition and they may present with blurred vision due to, for example, a cataract. It can also be diagnosed in children and children may present with a difference in vision between the two eyes and there is then a very realistic risk of a permanent reduction of vision in the one eye due to amblyopia. The classic features that patients with FHC will have are a difference in colour between the coloured parts of one's eye, there will be a rumbling inflammation and patients will also be found to have, for example, a cataract. Remember, these patients are young adult patients, so unless they have a history of trauma or congenital cataracts, they should not really have a cataract at this age. So therefore, if a cataract is found on examination and the diagnosis of FHC is unknown, then there should be a high degree of clinical suspicion as to FHC being the underlying diagnosis. Classically, what happens to the iris, i.e. the coloured part of the eye, is it undergoes wear and tear changes and in doing so, the eye becomes lighter and paler. Patients have a low-grade inflammation within their eyes pretty much at all times. However, this inflammation does not respond to steroid treatment and you get the absence of posterior synechiae which is a complication associated with, for example, anterior uveitis. That is a key diagnostic differentiating feature between FHC and anterior uveitis. Deposits secondary to the inflammation are also found on the corneal endothelium, so-called keratic precipitates. And in FHC, these tend to be located all over the cornea in a diffuse manner and pattern. Again, unlike anterior uveitis and other conditions where they tend to be clustered together. These patients will also classically have cataracts as mentioned earlier and they can develop raised intraocular pressure which puts them at risk of glaucoma for example. So based on the signs and features of the condition described, you can see that the condition can be diagnosed on clinical examination and a laboratory workup is not usually needed. There will always be inflammation in the eyes of these patients because they have the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier. Therefore, treating them with topical steroids will be ineffective and should be avoided. 
Once the condition has been identified and diagnosed, these patients require careful monitoring and follow-up to identify cataracts and glaucoma. The cataracts can be removed and a intraocular implant can be inserted to try and improve the vision for patients. And with respect to glaucoma or elevated intraocular pressure, this needs to be managed appropriately in a stepwise algorithmic manner according to the patient's pressure and their other characteristics. Thank you so much for watching this video about Fuchs heterochromic cyclitis. I hope you've learned about what the condition is, how it presents, how it is diagnosed and how it is managed. If you've liked this video then please do give it a thumbs up, click the bell icon, comment, like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much until next time.